Hi, I am Avinash Joshi, Product Manager at Snowflake for AI ML Observability. And I'm here today to talk about how to use Snowflake's ML Ops features to build, deploy, and monitor a model in Snowflake ML. But first, let's talk a bit about Snowflake ML. Snowflake ML is a set of integrated capabilities to do end-to-end -end machine learning in Snowflake. It comprises of IDEs such as Studio, Snowflake Notebooks, and external IDEs, which can use to build your models using ML functions or Snowflake ML APIs to ML ops using feature store, model registry, and observability. Do all of this on scalable compute, such as container runtimes or ML optimized warehouses. Today, our focus is mostly going to be on ML ops, or more specifically, on model registry and observability, which is a new feature that we are announcing soon. First, let's talk a bit about what is model registry. Model registry is an integrated solution for managing and deploying AI ML models. You can train your models using any of the different cloud service providers or Snowflake ML and use the multiple frameworks that these providers allow you to use for training your model. And once you have the model ready, you can log that model into Snowflake's model registry. As soon as the model is registered, it is ready for inference. You can manage your different model versions and metadata with full RBAC capabilities of Snowflake. You can very easily productionize your models and manage their lifecycle. It comes with a convenient UI to use and a Snowflake ML API, which you can use from any notebooks or IDEs. We'll see more about this experience during the demo. Next, let's talk about observability for ML models. Observability is a set of built-in tools that Snowflake provides for monitoring your model's performance using metrics such as accuracy, drift, etc., for ensuring that your model's performance remains reliable over time. You can track these metrics securely within Snowflake's governed environment and compute them at scale using scalable compute. You can also generate alerts on these metrics if they reach a threshold that you've configured. You can view these metrics with built-in Snowsight UI dashboards within the model registry. Observability is a key piece that completes the full ML lifecycle for a model within Snowflake. Today, Snowflake has generally available features such as Feature Store, Model Registry, and Snowpark ML that allow you to create a training data set from your data lake or from your Feature Store, train a model, and register it in Model Registry. Once it is in Model Registry, you can then use its inference func capabilities for computing predictions on production data. Observability piece works on the on these predictions which are then stored in monitoring logs and the, and the observability module sits on top of it computing these metrics and allow you to track them in different dashboards now let's take a, look, a bit of a deeper look at what these monitoring logs look like monitoring logs is nothing but a table or a view which has an ID column to uniquely identify each row, a timestamp column that, sh that tells you the time at which the prediction happened, and the different features that were used by the model for making this prediction, the prediction itself, and optionally, if the, if the ground truth label is available, the label. The observability product expects you to provide this either in the form of a table or in the form of a view to its as a configuration parameter. Let's get into the demo at this point to see how all of this looks like. In this demo, we'll be showcasing how a complete model lifecycle looks like within Snowflake by using Snowflake ML Python SDK, model registry, ML observability, and alerts plus stored procedures, all of this through Snowflake notebooks. The use case we'll be using is of a bank that has been dealing with a lot of customer churn. 
they want to understand why they are losing these customers by building a classification model which can predict the pro likelihood of a customer churning so that they can take necessary action to reduce it. The features that this model will be using are credit score, geography, gender, age, tenure, balance, number of products, has credit card, is active member, one if they did pay, uh, did they do have one if zero if they don't, estimated salary, debt to income ratio, and the label will be ex will be a column called exited. Let's look at what the training data set looks like. The training data set has the customer ID, the different features we were just talking about, the exited column, which is the label, whether the customer has exited the bank or not. And finally, a timestamp column for the time at which this data was recorded. Since our training set has both numerical and categorical features, We'll do some pre-processing on this data before it can be sent to the model for training. I'll be using the pipeline feature to pipe together two different pre-processing steps. First, on the categorical columns, we'll be using the ordinal encoder to convert them into binary zeros and ones. And on the numerical features, we'll be using the min-max scalar to normalize all the numerical features to the same scale. Once we have that ready, we'll now train an XGBoost classifier to build this classification model. Once this model is trained, we'll lock this to the model registry by creating first a registry object and then using the log model function of that registry object. And it looks like this model is registered to the model registry. You can use the model registry UI to check whether your model version got registered or not. As you can see, the model version V2, which we just logged, is now available in the model registry. You can click into that model version to understand the different details about that model. If you set up tags or metadata for that model, and more most importantly, what are the different functions that are associated with this model version that you can use to call? Predict can be used for doing inference. Predict probability can also be done used for doing inference, but which gives you a probability score. And finally, you can use the explain function to generate Shapley values, which can be used to explain a model's behavior. Now that this model version is registered, let me start an inference pipeline for this model. While this inference pipeline is running, we can enable monitoring on this model using Snowflake's brand new ML observability capability. You can do that by using the SQL API to create a model monitor object on a model version. The way you do so is by using create or replace model monitor and give it a name and then pass in a few important parameters that the monitor re object requires. First, the name of the model. Second, the version of the model. Third, the function that you are using. And fourth, most importantly, the source table in which the monitoring logs are being stored. And then a description of some of the key columns, such as the timestamp column, prediction class column, ID column, and the label column. This is a one-time setup that you have to do for a model version. And now, as and when the data comes into the source table or the model does an inference, this monitoring object will automatically ensure that the metrics are computed over time for this model version. If we go to the model versions page, again, we can see that for the model version, model version V2, the monitoring status has turned to active. Now let's simulate running of production data into this model version by sending in the first week of October's data to this model. I'm going to call the inf an inference stored procedure that's going to fetch data for the first week of October and pass it to the model version v2. 
while this is running let me explain to you what i have done to set up an alert on this model i have set up an alert such that if the precision ever falls below 0.5 i want to retrain a model by using new data and automatically log it to model registry. Looks like the inference for this model version 2 has completed. Let's go and see what does the monitoring dashboard look like for this model. You can access that from the versions, model versions page and clicking to the version and switching over to the monitoring tab and open monitoring. As you can see, we had piped in the first week of October's data and for that first week, this model is not doing very well. The precision is mostly below 0.4 every day. I've set up an alert to get triggered if the precision falls below 0.5 to first send me an email alert, which we got and also start a new retraining pipeline for the th next version of the model by using fresh data to build a new model. Let's see if that model is ready. As you can see, a new model version B3 is now available in the model versions page. This model version was created as part of an automatic retrain pipeline which was triggered because V2's model version V2's performance was less than expected. Now we can attach a monitor on this new model version as well. Let's start an inference pipeline for this third version of the model and attach a monitor to it. We can enable monitoring on it by using the exact same, same steps as before. You use the create model monitor object function SQL API to do so. Once this is ready, we can go to the model versions page and refresh it to see that the model version V3's monitoring status has also turned to active. Let's open its monitoring dashboard. As you can see, for this model version, the precision is much higher than the previous model version, which is to be expected because a portion of this data was used for training this model. But the story doesn't end here. Just because this version of the model did better in the first week of October, doesn't guarantee that it will continue to do better. To be sure about that, I would like to run an A-B test where both versions of my model are run in parallel and I can see when the same data is sent to both the models, how do they perform in production and then make my decision on whether to continue with model version V2 or decommission it in favor of model version V3. For that, I'm going to run my inference pipeline on both the model versions. And once that data is ready, we won't need to do anything else because the monitors are already set up. Looks like the inference pipeline has run for both the model versions. Now I can go back to the dashboard and refresh this dashboard to make sure that the latest data shows up in this dashboard. As you can see, the second week of October's data is now being tracked in this dashboard. The model version V3 is still doing well on the second week of October. You can then compare with between the both the versions of the model and see which one is doing better. And as you can see, V3 is faring much, much, much better than V2 when it comes to precision. Hence, I get confidence that I should be continuing with model version V3 and decommission model version V2. Thank you, that's the demo. Just to quickly recap what we showed in the demo, we first trained a model version v2 using snowflake ml python package in notebooks 
logged it to model registry, ran a production inference pipeline, received an alert due to low precision, automatically started a model retraining pipeline for V3 model, which was then which was trained and deployed to registry, enabled monitoring on V3, and did an A-B test on both of them. In this way, this represents a model, a complete life cycle of a model and how you can use the MLOps capabilities of Snowflake to truly uplevel your data science practices and the way you productionize your models. Thank you.